Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Today is my review of the Lantac Raven 223-22 Frankenstein um, custom build. This isn't in fact a 50 cal, I'm just incredibly short. So obviously when handling any firearm, safety precautions have to be taken every time. There's no shortcuts with safety when handling rifles. So to that end, ensure that the rifle is clear. Three point check, bolt body chamber, bolt body chamber, clear, safe direction. For the duration of this video, there'll be no ammunition natures in any close proximity whatsoever to this rifle. So after three years of ownership of the Lantac Raven 223 slash Frankenstein 22LR, um, I've got to say that I'm very, very pleased with my purchase. Uh, I've got no regrets whatsoever. Um, she was an expensive purchase back in day one, but she's, uh, she's, she's proved the worth without a shadow of a doubt for me. I'm pleased that I did opt for the premium package because again, like I've said in the video, it gives me dual functionality in different configurations. The quality of workmanship speaks for itself. It really is a dog's nuts. Um, reliability in the 223 configuration. I've shot a lot of different weapon systems in the military in my career. Uh, and guys who've done similar will know what I'm saying here. When, when you hear a rifle or a weapon system recoil or operate, it, it should it just should have a real tight tolerance. It should just sing to you, um, which this rifle does in spades. I've got, to, I've got to be honest; it's one of the smoothest, most efficient rifles I've ever I've ever used. And I'm not trying to kiss ass with Lantac whatsoever. I've got no affiliation with them. They they don't even know I exist. Um, but I will give credit where credit's due. And for the purpose of you guys out there who are thinking about getting a Lantac, investing all that money in one, you get a big thumbs up from me. In this in this configuration, in the 223 roll, she's just absolutely beautiful, smooth. Uh, the recycling is just effortless. And working parts going forward just sounds of the nuts. Just a quick review of the current configuration. So I've got a um, Lantac Dragon muzzle brake at the front here with a quick detach um, fitment here for my suppressor. I've got a 14 and a half inch um, barrel from Lantac and a 13 and a half inch free float Sparda M uh, in M-lock configuration, obviously. Um, I've gone for the Olight Odin Mini on this occasion. I have got the Surefire Scout range. Um, however, to be honest, looking at reviews of the Odin on YouTube, and my kind of dislike of Surefire's build quality in terms of their pressel switch, which I find to be quite cheap, to be honest. It's, it's just not got that reassuring uh, feel when you activate the, the pressel. Um, I've not been disappointed by Odin, uh, Olight's Odin at all. It's been very, very reliable. The switch is very tactile and gives that reassuring activation of the light. I won't shine it in your face, but that is just, it's a very definite on and a very definite off, and it's just, it's very nice. Um, the price point for the Odin as well was very reasonable. I bought it during their sale. I won't go into it, because obviously this is a Lantac review, but I bought it during one of their sales, got it for a very good price. Yeah, moving back as well, you can see that I've gone for a rail scales uh, anchor. I find this to be very ergonomic. It's really sexy to touch. The uh, the detail in the, stip the stipples on the front there, I don't know if you can see those, but, Oh, it's just beautiful, very tactile, and um, when you've got it in the in the shoulder like that, it's just, yeah, you can really bring that home nice and tidy into the shoulder. Hopefully, uh, you've been able to identify that this is the milled version of the of the Raven. In the 223, it only actually comes in the milled version, but in the 2-2 uh, the configurations, you can't have them as forged uppers and lowers, whereas this one is all billet alloy, and it's very, very beautiful. It's incredibly well made. The detail is phenomenal. And the, and the kind of the tactile touch is just reassuring. You can you really can feel the quality here. It's uh, equipped with Magpul furniture, so I've gone for the Magpul hand grip there. 
and I've upgraded to the UBR stock because uh, the CTR is just, to be honest, not very sexy. Uh, I, I didn't particularly like it. So I've upgraded there. The, the trigger mechanism is a Geisley two-stage trigger. Like I say, the, uh, the initial uptake is very predictable. Uh, you can just get back to that wall effortlessly and it's just a nice extra little squeeze and you get the uh, the break of the trigger. It's uh, it's really nice. Um, I tend to use this mostly in the kind of uh, close quarter roll. And as such, I've gone for Strike Eagle, uh, one in six, uh, low power value optical here. It kind of fits both my purposes, to be honest. I can use it at, at, at range, up to 300 meters, which is probably as far as I go with this rifle. Um, but for close target acquisition, the uh, the BDC reticle inside is just perfect. It's kind of like a bit of a red dot, so it serves both masters there in that regard. So the uh, the BDC reticle inside the Strike Eagle obviously has effective ranges, so you can just compensate and hold off on the marks for different ranges. Uh, I think it's up to about 600 meters effectively. Um, but up for up close targets, uh, the nice horseshoe on the outside, basically you can just frame that reticle over the intended target and center of mass, you know, you're gonna get a nice uh, tight grouping. I've gone for a Magpul bad drop, um, just to shave a few seconds off reloads and carrying out IAs, which I, I tend to like when I'm doing kind of uh, work in 2-2. So in this current configuration, I tend to use this on more traditional range days, um, up to and including about 400 meters. So obviously in this configuration, it's 556 slash 223. Um, she's absolutely beautiful on the range. She's very tight. The tolerances are incredibly tight on this rifle uh, and the accuracy has been remarkable. Um, Lantac claims to have a, a, a one MOA. And to be honest, I can see where they're getting that from because it's incredibly tight groupings. Um, I've had like inch groupings at 100 meters. Uh, I'm no marksman, but um, but 100 meters, uh, a one-inch grouping is very impressive. Uh, that's and that's a five-round grouping as well. Okay, so we'll talk a bit more about Lantax proprietary enhanced bolt carrier group. Uh, this is specifically designed for the straight pull variants in 223 Wild. You'll see that it's it's black in colour. It's got a nitride finish that uh, makes it more hard wearing uh, and reduces friction. It also has this gold um, smooth cam pin. Um, guys who have different brands of AR-15s or mil-spec rifles will, will know that that's normally kind of like a rectangular shape. Um, but Lantac have engineered this to be a more smooth dome cam pin type thing. So the justification for that is, obviously, if it's not rectangular and it's smooth edge, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have less friction when it's cycling up and down the, uh, the upper receiver, which, uh, which seems to make sense for me. Um, and... It, pff, and when it recycles like it does and it's just so smooth as it is, it's, it's obviously attributable to that. Also inside here, just behind here, so you've got the, you've got the bolt here and you've got the firing pin back here. Um, Lantac have got like a spring in place as well. I've, I've never seen that on any mil-spec ARs or uh, 416s or anything like that. Um, and it, I don't know if you can see it properly here, but you see that spring action? Again, normally in a, a mil spec rifle, this would be free free moving. So you pull it back, it would slide down. And so this has got like a an automated recoil. So I imagine that this helps the splines re uh, reintegrate into the barrel. And again, it just gives it that kind of smooth integration. Uh, probably adds to the Rolls Royce factor that I spoke about earlier. So yeah, definitely impressed with that. So for me, one of the reasons I elected to go for the top spec Raven in the first place was I believe in quality. I believe in getting it right first time. And I like to think that you can change the configuration depending on your needs for the, for the day's training. So obviously being full mil spec and billet, I know that I've got the premium rifle. Um, so depending on what I'm doing that day, if I'm gonna go and do long distance work, obviously I'll use it in the 223 configuration, which you see here. Or if I'm going to do like close, close quarter stuff, uh, quick transitions from uh, rifle to pistol, um, I, I choose to go for the uh, CMMG bolt carrier conversion kit, which you can see on the table below. So simply changing from this configuration 
into the 2.2 uh, LR roll is, is quite straightforward and very, very quick. So I'll just show you that now. Okay, so I'll just make sure the rifle's clear before I do anything else. Safe direction. Okay, so in real time, remove the rear pin. I'll remove the front pin because it's just going to be a lot easier for inserting the better mat. Okay, so I'll just settle her down there. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is install the better mag um, conversion kit. So this basically allows you to insert the 2.2 LR magazine, which I choose to use M&P, and this allows you to retain the last round opening function. Just make sure that's set to the rear. Okay, so what you do is you insert the better mag into the magazine housing. There'll be a little catch little pushing catch there, which is a bit of a patch. Just push this up slightly until you get the first resistance on the magazine release catch. Then you press in the magazine release catch. Slide it up, but just stopping short, the holding open mechanism. At which stage you're gonna get your new little inverted H thing there. And this is the, uh, the conversion basically that gives you another couple of mil on the mechanism to catch the working parts as they come to the rear. So this is a bit fiddly and you make sure that the H is facing forward. Activate the existing hold and open device. And then it's just a case of fiddling slightly just to get the right height. That's it, getting the right height and you're just making sure the existing hold and opening device fits in to the mechanism there giving you those extra few mil to catch the uh, CMMG bolt carrier group. And then you just slide that home and reset it down so you get, that's in place now. And there you go. Okay, so that's that done. In this configuration in the 2.2, the buffer tube isn't actually doing anything. In the 5.56, obviously, that's taking the, uh, the kinetic energy from the, the bolt carrier group and the explosion of the round and then sends the mechanism back home. But in the 2.2, that mechanism is a blowback feature. So this just sits against that buffer tube. It doesn't actually do anything. So all you're hearing is that plate against the buffer tube. So that's why you get a bit of a twang. Um, doesn't affect anything, so to speak, but it's just a little bit annoying on the ear because you hear a bit of a twang. And in a rifle of this, uh, this caliber and this quality, you don't really want to hear that nonsense. So anyway, so I've produced some uh, 3D printed um, these are called pressure plugs. So all it does, if you see there, I'll show you a picture on screen. It's got a, uh, a groove that runs the length of the tube and then a small one at the front and at the back um, that then once in place locks, locks it onto the existing um, pin there. So the long length just fits over that existing retaining pin. You push it all the way in and then you twist it round and lock it into place. I'll show you some more details on screen for that. So that's my lower all uh, spec up ready to go. On the upper, it's just a case of removing Lantax bolt carrier group, which is rather Gucci, as you, I'm sure you'll agree. And inserting the CMMG, I always have to say it like that because I always get it wrong, CMMG uh, bolt carrier group into there. And then just pushing that home. So with this as well, you'll see you get a bit of resistance and movement on the on the uh, the new bolt carry group in there. So all you're going to do is just push that in slightly, fit it roughly in place with the uh, pressure plug, and then a nice little firm pull down, and it'll it'll seat nice and tidy. So there we go, it's seated then. Okay, and then just fire off the action. Now, obviously, I did that from the seated position. It's not the best position to do it from, but um. That was pretty straightforward. And considering you're getting effectively two rifles out of one, a couple of minutes, hey, that's nothing at all. Um, in the 2-2 configuration, again, I've had very good accuracy. Obviously, the holds are different when I'm using this scope, so I have to, I have to aim off uh, and, and lift my point of aim, so my point of impact is, uh, is compensated for. But some of the, the groupings I've got from there are very, very impressive, especially considering that I'm using it in the standing alert position, so reactive shooting. Um, 
for some, some of the shoots I'll attach some of the uh, the targetry. So three rounds each time quick a session. Very, very tight groups. I'd probably say the size of a 10 pence piece, standing alert. Um, again, fantastic. It just it just speaks volumes for the quality of the barreling. I mean, this is a one in eight twist and I'm shooting two two. Um, obviously it's coming out a lot quicker, but it's, um, it's, it's fantastic. So for that dual configuration, I've been very, very happy. However, getting back, sorry, a bit off, off uh, topic there. This was designed and engineered specifically for 223. So running 22LR out of this will have some issues. Um, these are all well known, well documented for any AR. Again, this isn't uh, as a fault of Lantax build quality, because if anything, like I said earlier, the fact that Lantax mill spec and tolerances are so bang on to the money um, is what's caused the issue with the uh, CMMG bolt carry group. Basically, I've had to utilize a pressure plug to get rid of the, the twangy noise that I mentioned earlier. Shooting the 2.2 um, standard CCI ammunition out of this has been an absolute pig. To say that that round is dirty is an understatement. It is absolutely honking. Um, those of you that are ex-military and stuff will appreciate when you fire blank rounds, the shit that you get in your uh, trigger housing mechanism is unreal. With the 2.2 standards, it's disgusting. So I've had after about 200 rounds, and I, I put a high rate of fire through this because um, I'm, I'm training specifically for, for professional reasons. Um, the bad lever, the Magpul bad lever, does not like 2.2 standards. It just, the mechanism gets clogged up and the uh, last round opening wraps its bangers in after about 100 rounds. So you'll be firing away. Weapon works, we weapon stops. You look at the uh, the cocking handle and you'll see it's fully forward. Obviously, you're out of ammunition and it should be fully to the rear. Um, that's something you just have to kind of live with. Um, the reason for that as well is I'm still using the bad lever, so when you're, on a, when you're sending the working parts home with the bad lever, it doesn't seem to have enough guts, enough spring tension to send that bolt home with any conviction, so then it doesn't pick up the, uh, the new round off the new magazine and then you get a stoppage. Um, to alleviate that, I've gone back to the good old fashioned uh, change magazine and then the normal kind of bolt release on the left hand side instead of using the bad lever, which has alleviated that problem as well. So it's, it's a bit of a workaround and you have to get to know all the uh, the little niggles of the 2-2. Um, that being said though, when I treat this fine lady to um, to the good stuff, to the copper plated 2-2, so um, CCI um, mini mags, it's been sweet, I've had no issues. Uh, and cleaning it is a lot better as well because you just haven't got all that gunk and nastiness in the trigger mechanism housing. And the, uh, the bolt release again is relatively unaffected. So it's just that dirty lead round it doesn't like. Yeah, another one that I've had, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show this on screen. Again, because this rifle is configured for proper 223, the, uh, the charging handle, sometimes when you're cycling the, the rifle at a high rate of fire, it will eject the brass out of the, out of the breech, but it will get caught up in the, uh, the narrow channel in the cocking handle because it hasn't actually got the working parts. So I'll use this one as an example because it hasn't got the elongated working parts at the front some of the brass can get caught in there and then obviously when the uh, the bolts recycling it just catches that brass so that's a bit of a pig so again to uh, to overcome that i've designed 3d um, printed inserts that when you're shooting in the 2-2 configuration you can use the existing 223 charging handle but you just slide that bad boy home fully forward fully towards the end of the breech and it just uh, it just occupies that that space that cavity that that would be there without it. So obviously if any brass does have any issues extracting, it just bounces off that and then straight out the ejection port. So uh, yeah, so really, I mean, for the purpose of buying top quality premium rifle that can go in both configurations, uh, I am rather smug that I went that way to be honest, because I, I get all the enjoyment and all the accuracy of a premium quality rifle in the form of the 223 at distance. And then for the fun plinking stuff where I can just practice my professional capabilities in the 2-2 configuration for the matter of just three, four minutes changing the bolt carrier group, inserting the pressure plug and the, uh, the charging handle insert. It's a no brainer for me. In my opinion, and having it for three years is a dog's nuts. Um, it's worth every penny. 
Those of you who know Lantax products uh, and familiarise yourself with the website will probably appreciate that these are quite expensive premium rifles, but the quality speaks for itself. Put LantacUK.com, their, um, their webpage. You can see like it's a pretty Gucci looking website. If we scroll straight to their firearms, okay, you can see their breakdown basically of, of their offerings. Starts with their premium package of the 2.2 Stealth Raven, which is sensual. Um, then it goes back down to like their uh, their compact SF15 and then their standard. So I think the standard comes with a 16 inch barrel and it's at a price point of 1100 quid. So let's just have a quick look. Yep, yeah, 16 inch barrel, one in 16 twist, obviously for a 2.2. Uh, and as a basic package, pretty comprehensive you got most of the magpul furniture there yeah, cmmg stainless steel bolt group um, which was obviously fixed in place in the barrel and it's got the catch 22 uh, last round opening device that's uh, slightly different to the one i've got um, but i would be keen to try that that catch 22 see which one's better okay so that's their standard package for 1100 pounds as i've said previously um if you look at the competitive market out there in the UK, there's only a handful of other considerations from different manufacturers. Um, for me though, however, in my humble opinion, there's only one uh, clear winner and that would have to be the Lantac. Now, so the Lantac uh, Stealth Raven here for £2,250. Okay, you're getting the billet lower, billet upper receivers. 10.5 inch handguard there, Spider M with obviously M lock configuration. The barrel is 12.5 inches. Obviously, one in 16 twist. And then it's complete spec out all top of the range. Geisley two stage trigger with a break of 3.8 pounds, which I think is a little bit lighter than mine. And you can purchase this in uh, standard as is, or you can opt for a money saving optics bundle uh, so here you get the vortex huey one and i believe it's the gen 2 now because uh, vortex have pulled all their gen 1s from the market so basically you are getting let me do the math you're getting a 600 pound optic for 350 pounds which is phenomenal so lantac have obviously done a bit of a negotiating there with vortex in the states to get a, a good package deal um <clears throat> let's have a look so for the £2,600 you get in that beauty. Obviously minus the Surefire Scout there on the front, you wouldn't get that. And I doubt you get the uh, the little M-Lock hand grips there. Probably don't get that. But that as a package is just phenomenal. So just a little bit about Lantac as a brand uh, and their manufacturing history. So it came as a bit of a surprise to me, to be honest, um, with the success of the Lantac brand in the States. I naively thought that Lantac was actually an American-owned company. I was very surprised to find out that basically the guy who started Lantac is actually a, a Brit by the name of Paul. Uh, I won't give any more details away about his name because that's not fair, but a gentleman called Paul, he had a background in engineering and was obviously very interested in shooting growing up. So he went into manufacturing of the AR-15. Um, his team now is obviously quite diverse with a lot of military background. So all that kind of uh, first-hand knowledge goes back into the intrinsic design and upgrades of the, of the rifles themselves. But um, yeah, so I was, I was really chuffed to find out that it was a British brand. Um, to take the Yanks on at their own game and smash them up like he has done is quite, quite a feat and says a lot about the quality of the rifle. I know it's expensive, but when you're looking for your I don't know, you're going for a 2-2 variant, you've got your choice between the SF forged uh, upper and lower, or you can go for the full Monty and get the billet. I know it's a bit of a bummer, but just spend that spend that extra few pennies. You'll save yourself a fortune in the long run because everything you're going to do, you've got on your to-do list for that, that rifle, that SF, trust me, it's much more financially prudent to just buy it straight out of the box. The billet construction is phenomenal. Um, I think with all the little tricks and bits you can get on the 2-2s the as well, 
out the box, all the Magpul furniture, the Geisley triggers and things. It's a no-brainer. Get it right first time, guys. Um, <laughs> my, my dream purchase going forward, like I said, I've had the dual functionality out of this rifle, and I love it. I really do love it. Um, I would like at some point to try and twist Lantac's arm and try and get them to do me a, a, just a bespoke upper. Again, I know they don't do that because their rifles are in such huge demand, they just can't mess around with orders like that. But again, this goes back to me saying, if you're going to purchase something, get it right the first time, because in theory, I don't need a replacement lower. My lower is a dog's nut, but to have another upper for 2.2 would just be phenomenal. Um, so at some point, if they ever get any downtime, I will be approaching them and trying desperately to buy a 2.2 uh, a bespoke upper, because then I've just got the best of both worlds. In, in, in one system so in my in my grab bag I can just have this rifle with my other upper and ready to rock and roll what else yeah that's stealth that stealth is sick isn't it that is one sweet puppy yeah I might have to at some point the cam as well the cam you seen the cam the multi cam the dark cam Forestry cam. That's, that's filth. Well, that's been the review of the Lantac Raven 223 slash 22 Frankenstein of mine. Um, I hope you found some of the comments useful, especially if you're going forward and, and thinking about purchasing uh, from Lantac. I've had nothing but positive experiences, and to be honest, like the, uh, the customer service as well has been fantastic throughout the whole life cycle of my rifle, so I really can't recommend them enough. Um, feel free to like and subscribe because that would massively help me out like I said I'm, I'm just starting this channel so any feedback any comments would be much appreciated uh, and a bit of a giggle as well it's always good cheers